Happy New Year! Today I teamed up the Lawson Engineer to bring you the best 18 New Year resolution ideas you should try this year. Initially, I wanted to give a full message on what a resolution is all about, but that won't be necessary. So the very first idea you should try this year is save your money by investing it. You might be asking, is this a New Year resolution idea? Yes, it is. It is even part of mine. We students have the attitude of always complaining about not having money, but yet we spend the little we have instead of saving it. I mean spending on things that are not necessary. Many students wish that they have millions in their bank accounts so that they can solve some school and life problems. See, exactly 10 years ago, if you saved by investing $10, which is roughly 5,000 Naira in Bitcoin, today you'll be having over $50,000, which is roughly this in Naira. But the big question is, if 10 years ago you had $30 and I advised you to save the money by investing it into Bitcoin, will you give me a listening ear? I don't think so. Now you have the money, you have the opportunity and the knowledge. Instead of saying, I wish I invested 10 years ago, I wish I invested 20 years ago, you still have the time now. I wish I invested earlier. Now, now is the time to save up. Now, instead of spending that little money that you have on unnecessary clothing or gadgets that you probably don't need now is the time to save it up by investing it you, i don't mean investing or saving it up in the bank because your money does not grow in the bank so you can just buy shares and also digital coins because that's actually the future please no inflation these are the potential perks of this thing called bitcoin but is bitcoin really the money of the future Bitcoin. 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 It's all the rage, but what the hell is it? So the best thing you can do for yourself this year is make a resolution to save more and invest more because of the future. The second resolution is build a habit of planning your day. I think planning my day and prioritizing my to-dos is probably the most important habit that I build as a student and that still helps me today in my job as a full-time engineer. I usually do my daily planning the evening before or if I don't have time, first thing in the morning before I start working. To plan my day, I follow three steps. First, I list everything that I want to get done that day. Second, I decide in which order to do the tasks based on how important they are. So during my work day, I would start with the most important task and then move on to my second most important task and so on. Third, I write down the schedule for the day, including all meetings, all appointments, um, even my breaks and lunch break. And then I fill in my high priority tasks in the free time that remains between the meetings so that I don't have to think about what I need to be working on each time of the day. Now, obviously things can change during the day, new tasks or problems can come up, priorities can shift or meetings can get canceled so that I suddenly have more time. Then we need to adjust the plan, but it is much easier to change your plan when you have listed your priorities at the beginning of the day then it is to react to changes unprepared so if you want to make planning your day into a habit follow these three steps before you go to bed tonight list your tasks prioritize and put them into your calendar and then all you have to do tomorrow is follow the plan the third new year's vision idea you should try out this year is learning digital skills that are related to your course of study over the past decade Companies across industries have digitalized their operations and processes. Even now, businesses are employing artificial intelligence to streamline their workflows and supply chains. As a result, today's job seekers require specialized skills to help them stand out from the crowd. A 2017 study by the European Communion, Communion, Communion found that 93% of European workplaces uses computer and 94% utilizing broadband internet. But that's not the catch. This is what blew off my mind. Furthermore, today there are more than half a million jobs which are unfilled. There are vacancies. There are positions that you or I can work if we would have the, uh, the necessary skills we need. Uh, and this is a paradox because if we think about it, we live in a time when unemployment, uh, unemployment rates are at their highest. We see the situation in Greece, in Spain, in Italy, where people don't have jobs, but at the same time, companies have vacancies. So you see the paradox. There's a, a, a mismatch between the supply of skills people have and the demands of companies. This is basically causing many of the organizations around the world to find it really difficult to find appropriately skilled people for the digital needs they have. And lastly, about, about Europe, is that in the near future, 
This was according to a 2017 research. We're pretty much screwed, I would say, because 90% of the jobs will require at least basic levels of digital skills. So in this year, don't fully focus on your education, but build a resolution to acquire some digital skills that are related, related to your course of study. Now, let's use the pandemic for instance. During the pandemic, there was no physical work except for the health workers that helped us. Well, the impact of the pandemic continues to affect jobs. The latest figures show that the UK unemployment rate has risen to its highest level for more than three years. The Office for National Statistics... But everyone's work went online and the online community grew massively. There was a lot of money online and also, this is the catch, many companies were looking for people that would work for them online. So if you're going to learn a new digital skill this year, smash the like button and also leave a comment on the skill you want to learn. The first resolution is take regular and effective breaks. I know when you're working and you're in the flow, it's hard to suddenly stop and take a break. And then when you're finally taking that break, it's really hard to get back to work. This still happens to me a lot, but I know deep down that I focus better, work more productively, and just feel better if I take regular breaks throughout the day. One of the most important things that I've done is to schedule at least one fixed break into my day that I don't compromise on, and that is my lunch break. As a student, and also now as an engineer, I would often get into the zone and just forget to take a break, forget to eat lunch, until I was really, really exhausted and also really, really hungry. If you then take a break, you're already really tired and you Really don't make the best food choices and then it's quite hard to get back to work afterwards. It really helps me to put my lunch break into my calendar and then get a reminder every day at noon to take a break. Apart from the lunch break I'm still experimenting with how many breaks to take throughout my work day. I sometimes like using the Pomodoro technique where you work for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break before getting back to work. On other days it works better for me to work for 90 minutes at once and then take maybe a 20 to 30 minute break. But one thing that matters even more to me than the timing of the break is is what I actually do in that break. Checking my phone is a sure way to feel even more tired after the break. So I always aim to spend at least part of my break doing something that actively helps me recharge. This can be taking a walk, going for a run, drinking some tea or taking a short nap or just opening the window widely and standing in front of it and taking a few deep breaths. So let's all aim to take more regular and effective breaks. I wanted to make a full video about this, but I decided to let's integrate this into this video. And also don't in, don't disintegrate me because of what I'm about to say. And that is spend less time on social media. Most of us students are addicted to their Facebook account. Some are addicted to their WhatsApp, some are addicted to their Instagram account. Now why did I use the word addicted? I use the word addicted because some most of us can't do without the social media and even according to statistics 90 percent of students use social media it's not that i want to say that using social media is not good or anything like that no social media is fun because we learn we connect and we grow and we also build some things on social media but i just discovered something recently it seems like the more you, we use social media the more it uses us here's what i mean from my discovery i just discovered that many students once they wake up the first place they go to is their whatsapp or facebook account during lectures when they're in classroom they are chatting and even when they are eating they are also chatting after all this we still complain we don't have time so in many ways than one the social media has taken away our time just like in the morning when you're supposed to be planning how your day will go you end up spending it on chatting with Maxi. During lectures, when you're supposed to be listening and learning, you end up looking for the bottom of Facebook, which can't be found. If you found the bottom of Facebook, please let me know. During meals, or let's say during lunch, when you're supposed to be enjoying your meal, you still end up using it to go to Instagram and check out the feed. This has just made us become less productive and more busy. No wonder they say, you can be sorry no wonder they say being busy is not the same as being productive see this year we need to learn a lot of things we also need to achieve a lot of things as well but we need time to do all this so the best thing we can do for ourselves is to free up time for ourselves by re reducing the time we spend on social media this year so if you are getting hyped up and you have a lot of achievements that you want to share with us please let us know in the comment section below the sixth resolution is get an early start on projects. Hold on, I know what you're going to say. Anna, I've tried many times, but I just cannot get myself to start a project until it's really, really urgent. 
that's fine. I'm exactly the same way. But then you also know that it usually ends badly with you cramming all the work into the last day before the deadline. So we know that we want to start earlier, right? Here's what we need to do. We need to change our perception of how urgent the project is. We basically need to get ourselves to stress earlier. And the way to do that is to first write down all the tasks that we need to do to complete the project. Then we're going to write down how much time we think each task is going to take. Now we're going to multiply that time by a factor of three. Yes, three. So if you guess the task would take one hour, you know we're going to put down three hours instead. This might seem like a lot, but deep down you know that your estimations were too optimistic. Now let's look at how many days you've left to complete the project and figure out how many hours per day you need to work to complete the project in time. That should hopefully make us feel stressed enough so that we want to get started immediately. Of course it also helps to block this time in our calendar so that we have a dedicated time window each day during which we're working on this project from the day we get the assignment to the day that we need to hand in unless you get done early with this strategy. The next new resolution idea you should consider this year comes in front of a question and that is do you want to improve your grades this year? If yes, try to improve your study techniques this year. I would have loved to break down everything about study techniques in this video but that would be a video of another day because talking about study techniques is a broad topic and that is something that I have to break down for you to easily understand and for it to help you. I don't want to jump back it all in this video. So if you are interested in building your studying techniques this year, make sure you subscribe because that is what we are focusing on this year. The eighth resolution is prioritize sleep and stop pulling all-nighters. I am very guilty of this one, especially during my bachelor studies. I would often stay up late to study for a test that I had the next day or work on a project until late in the night. In many cases, I would even work until the next morning if I had a deadline that day. I think it's pretty obvious that we don't do our best work when we are on two to three hours of sleep and two to three energy drinks. But just to be sure, let's say it again. We don't do our best work when we're tired. Sleep has a very important function of building connections in our brain. The things that we learn and experience each day get processed and stored in our brains while we're sleeping. If we mess with the sleep, we mess with the process. We might not be able to remember things as well, if at all. We might have trouble focusing, make careless mistakes, and just don't function as well as when we're rested. And often we might not even realize this. So we might be studying a lot, thinking that we will do just fine on the test, but when we never get that proper sleep that helps us store the learnings in our brain, we perform poorly on the test and don't even understand why because we haven't yet made that connection that sleeping is a necessary part of studying like i said in the beginning i used to do this a lot at uni and i still don't get the right amount of sleep every single night but i'm starting to recognize the importance of my sleep and i want to work on this so let's all get a fresh and rested start this year make it a priority to sleep enough and watch ourselves be amazed at just how much we can achieve when we get the sleep that we deserve question of the day out of the eight ideas which two do you think you're going to focus on this year please let us know in the comment section below and on that note i want to specially thank engineer anna for joining me in this video i really really appreciate i'm grateful thanks a million now if you are an engineering student or you want to study engineering and you want to feel the process of studying engineering in the university please make sure you check out anna's channel on youtube she has a lot of content that will help you as far as engineering is concerned so without further ado i would love to introduce you to anna happy new year my name is Anna and I'm a German mechanic engineer based in Sweden. On my channel I make videos about life as an engineer, productivity, career advice and business skills for engineers. I hope you have an amazing year ahead.